No one is more familiar with hand and wrist injuries than professional athletes. So who better to talk about proper technique and equipment than the reigning welterweight champion of the UFC, George St. Pierre. George, welcome to Hand and Wrist TV. Thank you, Dr. Okay. So I want to ask you about your, in your career, have you had any major hand injuries? I've been very fortunate. So I never had a major in, uh, injury. I had some injuries though, uh, but when you're, when you're a martial artist and you compete a lot, you try to, to hide those injuries. You don't want to let people know. So I, I had some in the past, of course. Well, so as far as taking care of your hands, I mean, to, to prevent injuries, obviously equipment's an important thing. Tell us about, as far as wrapping the hands, that's very important to a, bo to a boxer and a uh, mixed martial artist. Can you show us how you would wrap your hands before you put the gloves on? Of course, the idea of wrapping, wrapping the hand is, if you, if you hit, for example, you, you, if, if you want to hit someone uh, with bare hand, you want to maintain the position. You don't want to bend your wrist, of course, because if you bend your wrist, it, it take away the, the, the stability, you know, in your joint and the impact will not be, the impact will be, it will not be where you want it. So right. the, it increases the, 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 the rate of injury. So when you wrap your hand, is I want to make sure it keep my, my wrist, it give us support to my wrist for not bending at the moment of the impact. Another thing too, is normally you, you, what you can use, you can put a, a little bit more padding on the knuckle. Mm -hmm. So you have also all the padding that you need on the gloves as well. So with all those two things, you make sure that it doesn't, it, it doesn't, uh, your, your, your wrist doesn't bend and it stays straight. So there is many ways to do it. Uh, I don't say that my way is the best. Uh, that's the way I use it. Sure. I've been using it for a very long time. Um, and uh, I'm gonna share it with you. Great. <laughs> So I see this side up. So I start with the thumb here and I go, I like to go three turn on my wrist. One, you see one, two and three. So I go down the wrist a little bit. Then I come back two turn going back towards my hand. One, two. I like to go around after that, around the, the thumb here. And then after the thumb, I go around the knuckle. Here. And I keep always when you, another thing, you want to keep a space. You don't want to tie it up your, 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 wrap your hand when it's, when it's closed because then after the blood, it will not, it would cut the right. circulation. So you want to make sure you have a, your, your finger is separated as much as you want. So you go around the knuckle one time. And what I do now is I'm, I'm going back down and look, look, I'm going to go back down on the wrist and right. come back between the, the fingers. I'm going between the finger and when I'm about to go around the wrist, I close my fist because the pressure is not the same when you keep your hand open and when it's closed. So Got it. close my, close my fist. And sometimes you can use another, an extra bandaid on your shoulder, on your knuckle as well. That's what I do, uh, too. So you have the, the bandage, the, the gloves, and you have a, an extra padding that you can do, which is not uh, recommend for everybody, but sure. I like to do it. So I close. Then I go around. So we see now it's tied, tied up by itself because my, my fist is closed. I open. Go, go around the other, the other space, the other fingers. Close. Then a little bit different this way. I open. Go between the fingers. Close again. Always closing at the end, at the end to make it uh, tight. Yeah. Exactly. Not too tight. It's not good when it's too right. tight. You want to let it breathe. Right. So when I, when, now is the, the, the finishing now here, I keep my finger very, very open, wide spread open, apart, yeah. spread open. I finish around the knuckle here. You see, I can go one or two turn, depending sure. how you like. And, and I finish after on the wrist here. I can go going down on the wrist, you see, two and three. That's so, how I like it to do. You feel it's very stable. It give a good support to my wrist. So it's, you can really feel a big difference between my two wrists. So if you would try to bend my wrist, this one is very, very easy to bend. Very, a lot more movement, you know, and here it's very stable. I can move it, but it's very stable. So at the moment of the impact, it will keep everything tight. So let me ask you this. So is, that's obviously, you're putting that on, then you're putting the glove on. Yes. Okay, is there anything else you do before you fight as far as just your hand and wrist? What I like to do before I, Put the uh, I put the tape on. I like to stretch a little bit, you sure. know, massage. Sometimes you feel some tightness, you know. Right. I like to massage, stretch, you know, 
and and you know I, I never had serious injuries maybe because I take, take really good care of my hand some other people will see because I'm not maybe the the hardest puncher in the industry right. which is probably true as well but I really I really think it's important to to protect your body you know your body is your your it's like a car for a race car driver if right. you know your car has a problem you're not going to do well so your body is the same way you want to protect your body to, to have a longer career as possible so once you're done boxing and uh, or fighting and in your or striking and once you're done with a in your case it's probably a very short uh, match uh, if you've taken care of your opponent quickly but let's say after a very long match mm -hmm. um, what do you do with your hands after that uh, it's important there's many ways depending how you feel uh, it already happened like after fights that I, after Josh Koshik in Montreal, I, I, I used a lot of my jab because a lot of damage and, and I heard that my hand was swelling. I hurt a little bit my hand. Nothing was broke. I didn't have a major injury, but I, I felt it was a little bit, it was hurting me. So what I did is I put, uh, I put my hand in the ice, you know, ice, yeah. you do like 10 minutes of ice, you ice right. it every hour you the, put it in, in an ice bath with water or just, just no I, I could put all my body submerged <laughs> by water but but sure but normally you were where you're you're hurt you put your hand you could take a like a go in your kitchen take a, a bowl right and and put your hand in ice water ice freezing water it's gonna be very hard in the first minute to maintain it there after it, it gets froze you the feeling is gone and you can you have to keep it there 10 to 12 minutes. Now, with a lot of things, the next day you wake up, you're much worse. I'm sure your whole body probably is sore. Not really, Not really. because because what happens sometimes is if you took care of it, like if you put it on, on ice mm -hmm. right away, it has to do right away after the fight. Okay. That's why I do right away. Even before the press conference, I start right away. Great. You wake up, you're good. You're, you're better than when you... Then when you when you just finish, so mm -hmm. that's what happened. Like my last fight with Hendrix, I had like I kick a lot, so I had like bruises on my legs right. and, and uh, my hand and my face. But I put ice on it, ice it. I looked very bad after a fight, but I, the next day I, I was at the beach and I was fine. Right. So let me ask you. So the when you fight in practice versus competition, do you use, you use the same the same type of glove or is it a more protective glove when you're practicing. No, no. When you practice, you want to use uh, more protection because you don't want to hurt yourself in right. practice. In competition, you have no choice. You have to follow the rules. It's right. small gloves that you have to Right. It's like a four four ounce glove. Sure. So, um, which is why I wanted to ask you about two, your, your opinion of the Hayabusa Takusha uh, glove here. It, it's two type of glove, right? Yeah. So th these one, for for instance, you see, these are fourteen ounce. Okay. okay. Most people. We are not professional. There are people that do the sport for for keep stay in shape. They will use 14 ounce for sparring. They can. Professional people, I don't suggest you to use a 14 ounce. I, I would suggest you. Ayabuza has gloves who are that are 16 ounce. I believe is is more uh, is better for sparring because professional athlete they hit they hit harder and also it's not only for the hand. It's for so the protection of your training partner. Don't want to hurt your training partner. So depending how you, what is your level, how hard you hit, I would suggest you, if, especially for your weight, if you're small or big, I would suggest most of guys like uh, over uh, 145 pounds to use 16 glo 16 ounce glove okay. for sparring. Okay. And uh, but when you hit the pads, when you hit the bags. Don't use your sparring gloves because right. when you use your sparring glove, it's like every equipment has a life life expectancy. If you use your sparring glove for hitting the bag, yeah. you're gonna damage it, right. and it's gonna you're gonna get you use you're gonna use it quick quick quicker. So what I suggest you, and it's also better, you use smaller glove. Like you can use a 10 ounce glove for hitting bads, hitting mitts. That's what I do. Sure. So I have a pair of gloves that when I hit mitts, when I work on the punching bag that are 10 ounce glove or 12 ounce, and I have glove that I use in sparring that are 16 ounce glove. Well, tell us on the Hayabusa glove, this one, about the support it gives you through the wrist. Yes. Tell me about that. That's another thing too. It's important to choose carefully the size of your gloves. You know, as many size. If you choose a glove that is too big for you, you can hurt yourself very bad. So it's important too, so you see the, the Hayabusa glove, they have an extra, an extra strap here for the wrist, you know? Some people likes it, some people doesn't, but I, I think it's important because of the wrist. You know, it, it comes down to what I said in the beginning, you wanna maintain a good support on your wrist. So when you put it on here, see, put it on, you have your wrist here. You, you put the, fir the first strap is very important because it, 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 it keep your wrist stable. 
Now you really feel it's a different different thing. See, you put you put you, sure. you put it as tight as possible. Right. So it's not gonna squeeze too hard because there is a padding. Right. As tight as you can, and then the the other one go over the top to, to protect your opponent. And it gives you support all throughout the whole hand, right? It goes from the wrist out to the knuckle. Absolutely. Yeah. So now I can I cannot bend my wrist. It's very very tight. Right. You know. So it's important that I have good band aid, good gloves, and now I can hit as hard as I can okay. on a very hard surface. Good. Well, let me add, so the, um, you know, with illustrious career like you've had, you've been, you have, you've been in the spotlight. And I have to ask, recently um, in the news, you've been pretty vocal about um, some of the, the, about the lack of stringent um, drug policy with the UFC. True. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, you know, where you're coming from there? I, 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 that's one thing. I never, it, it's been misinterpreted my intention in, in that regard. You know, I never wanted to do anything negative towards UFC. And UFC, they, they, they're the, the, that's the company that made me who I am. And if I'm wealthy today, it's because of them. You know, they made me who I am, the professional mm -hmm. athlete, the image I have, the sponsorship. So what I did is I did it to elevate the sport. It's, it was nothing, my intention was not to do anything negative. It was to, uh, to do a positive thing, to elevate the sport. And after I came public with what I thought, uh, like, because I said it was a big problem in the sport about steroid and, and drug performance, I received a ton of text message of not only fighters, but also reporters that are afraid to speak. They're afraid to lose their job. To, to, you know, they know that what is going on, but they're afraid. You know? So uh, I, receive, I receive a lot of support, and I think it's a good thing you know, because people are... are People are, are stuck and they, they, couldn't, they couldn't come publicly with this, but I think it's, it has something to do. It has nothing, I don't want to accuse any, uh, a person sure. because too many other will come. I don't want to blame the UFC because it's not their fault. Right. The, the UFC is not their fault, it's the system. The right. problem is the system. There is no guideline. There is no, uh, it should be testing. Like I was, uh, two days ago I was with my friend Chris McCormack, <laughs> world champion triathlete. He's tested, like they can come anytime randomly to, to test sure. him because he's a competitor. Sure. And same thing in judo, in any other Olympic sport, any other, any other sport, they can come randomly to test you. You right. know, why not mix martial art? Right. Because the reason is because it's a new sport. It's a new sport with no guideline. We haven't done the guideline yet, and I think it should be done. It will elevate the sport to another level. Now, it's obviously athletes do it to first and foremost enhance their performance, right? Of course. But, but what do you see as the, the main concern with long-term side effects? That, as a physician, that would be my biggest concern is one, for, you know, one they, want, they want the leg up on that match, right? But long-term, it's going to have, to me, a much worse effect on, their, on, their, on the human being. Of course, it would be a very bad. I mean, it's like smoking. You, you, you can smoke cigarette for... For 20 years, never had anything, or 50 years, and I live very long and happy. You can smoke for, uh, never smoke, have secondary smoke next to you and die after a year. Right. So it's hard to say to predict, but of course you increase your chance of, of, uh, of having problem. And a lot of these guys who take uh, performance and enhancing drug, they're very good now. They feel on top of the world sure. for a few years during the, the right. time that they do their cycle. But once they're going to stop, that's the problem. I don't want to die at 50 years old. Right. I don't want to die at 40 years old. I want to live long. I want to have kids one day. I want to play with my kids. I have a, be an LT man. I want to be, I want to be like you, look yeah. very LT. <laughs> no, but that's my goal. You know, I don't want to be all messed up and crutches <laughs> right. and have problem liver and uh, all kind of things. Yeah. And I, it's also another thing too, is when you fight someone and he's using performance enhancing drug, is like a weapon. It's like if we fight together and I give you a knife, you have an advantage because you have a weapon, but Performance enhancing drug, it's like a bioweapon. It's not a fair fight. It's a, it's a, I think you cannot be against the bird two in, in that. Well, that and, it, and obviously we've seen it in other sports, baseball, home run records, right? I of mean, course. There, there's, you know, there, and so that's, it takes away the fairness, obviously. Everybody should be on an even playing field. C cycling is a good example. Yes. Recently, they, 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 now they, they keep the sample, they test randomly, they, they keep the sample during 10 years, so now their competitor are afraid to cheat. It's a lot less uh, drug uh, performance enhancing drug now. So if you take the winner of this year in cycling, he, he would finish 40th, 40th, 10 years ago. So that just shows you how incredible it is. And, and the, the thing is, if you lose a race, 
It's it, you lose a race is bad for your business. You know, it's bad for your image, your ego. But it's not like you lose a fight. You lose a fight. It's not only bad for your business and ego. It can be bad for your health, for your well-being. You can have cerebral damage. Right. You can be broken your arm. Because sure. a fight is not fair. It's like you're fighting a human cyborg. Right. And you know, I, I the only regret I have is I should have done that uh, a little bit uh, earlier. Sure. This whole thing, I, I did it. You know, I've seen a lot of things going on, and and I didn't talk about it, and it started to bug me, bug me, bug me. At one point, I was like, you know, I. I think it should come out publicly when and make they, they should make a guideline about that, you know. Well, on a lighter note, um, as a martial artist, you know, it's important to avoid injuries and prevent injuries. Um, on a lighter note, I'd like you to come over here, if you would, and show us a, show us a few pointers on proper striking techniques to hopefully prevent injuries. If you yes. Can. Come on over here, and I guess we'll just keep your wrap on for that. So. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, there's many ways of, uh, of punching, you know, like... Um, there is in karate they say you use a, the first two knuckle. If you read uh, Jack Dempsey's book, he says it's the third knuckle because the third knuckle make the perfect alignment to your uh, to your joint. So it's it's a lot of different opinion in the, in this. Um, what I like to do is uh, you know sometimes one of the reason in, in my fight I try to when I try too much to get a knockout I don't get it. Mm -hmm. The fight that I get the, the knockout was against uh, for example Matt Hughes, Jay Aaron, and I, I get the knockout standing up is because I didn't even try hard. Mm -hmm. I just let it go and I got very fluid and I focus on a small point. So if you aim small, you're gonna miss small. So when you fight a, a guy, for example, and by the way, he, he don't he doesn't have any sand in him. So we, don't, we're gonna be, be we're gonna call him Bob. Bob is what we call him. There you go, there Bob. You go. So that's how I hit Bob. You see, I don't only want to hit his face. I want to put t use a little point on the, on his face because let's say I would take a. a, a a sharpie and I would make a little dot on his chin. That's where I would I would like to hit him. Uh, the chin, or I mean, you can use a temple, it's pretty good, but the chin is very good because when you hit on the chin, it, it, the guy got to drop right away. And the, the thing that is important too, when you hit, it come down to what I said, you don't want to hit with your wristband because you're going to have less impact. Right. You're going to lose the energy in, in when, it, when it's bent. You want to make sure at the moment of the impact, everything is aligned. It's about alignment. Perfect. It's not about the muscle, it's about alignment. Someone who hit hard is because he has a good alignment. It's about that. Right. It always been my problem. Sometimes I try too hard and I disalign myself and I don't have the power that I wish I could get, you know? So very important, when I hit the person, you know that the, I, I, try, I, hang, I, I hang small, so if I miss, I miss small. And it's very important that I have the, the, right, the right alignment. You see my arm and right. all the weight is going forward in the same direction. All the vector are going in the same direction. And I use, it comes from my leg. I use the twisting motion with my, with my leg here. Boom. I don't want, I want a good straight impact here. So do you do any, um, I mean, as far as, because obviously the, as a hand and wrist surgeon, the biggest injuries I see uh, with pro fighters is when they're throwing hook punches or upper, or they get lazy and they and they shear off and hit the the little finger side of the hand. Um, as far that's a straight punch. Any any words of wisdom as far as any other punch techniques you use? Yeah, it would be the same thing. If you do an uppercut, don't bend your wrist. Right. Like use use the the, the 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 same motion. It's not your wrist that bend. Elbow. It would be the elbows. Right. Right? It would be the elbow. That's the main thing you want to do. Okay. You don't want to bend your 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 wrist because right. it's a small, very delicate delicate joint. If you do a, a, a hook, it's same thing. The hook it will be like this, yeah. Right. The hook here, not here. It's not right. it's not like this. The hook. The one that everything is straight. You keep this straight. This is like one 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 piece. You don't have two pieces. The, the the second pieces is this. That's the main thing you need to to know. Is this is one piece. This doesn't move. It stay all in. So you go with a with a hook. Boom. Same thing. Right. Everything is in one pieces. Okay. Right. Well, one other thing I have to ask you before we get out of here is the UFC world has been rocked a little lately with about the possibility of you retiring. Any chance you're going to come back? I I call it a break because. I didn't want to say it was a retirement, and I didn't know. I have a lot of things that I'm working on right now, right now a lot of projects. Sure. And I've been, ver for a very long time, I've been under a lot of pressure. When you're, sorry, I just right. eat something. <laughs> when, when, you, um, when you are a champion, you're the target for a very long time, and people is chasing you. 
And it takes a lot of energy because you have a lot of critic, a lot of expectation. And you have to be a role model all the time because, you know, that's the money business. You need to be a good role model, you know. And it's hard sometimes, you know, I have a lot of pressure. Uh, people challenging me all the time. Every time I fight someone, I, it's another one that is waiting and challenging me publicly. So it's a lot of pressure. And I need to take a time off to get out of the radar, of, get out of the competition. I'm always training every day. I'm always in great shape. So um, if one day I will be back, I will be back. But right now, I, I don't give myself any, any date. Sure. All right. Well, listen, George, it's been a great having you. And thanks for joining us at Hand and Wrist TV. And everybody will be right back. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.